Hey all you action figure enthusiasts out there, JC here and welcome back to the channel. For today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at the brand new Masters of the Universe 1 6 scale deluxe He-Man figure from Mondo Toys. This just arrived the other day. Hopefully uh, the figure will be all in one piece. I know some people have been having some issues with this one, but we're going to open her up. So let's head on over to the review station and take a closer look at what's inside. Now before we open her up, let's just take a quick look at the packaging with, with this one, which is pretty nice. So on, on the outer box here, on this outer flap, you get some really nice artwork featuring the three different versions of He-Man that you can uh, have this figure displayed as. The Thunder Punch He-Man, the, the regular He-Man, and then the Battle Armor He-Man. So um, that's pretty nice artwork. You've got the Mondo logo up at the top. Uh, the rest of the box is fairly generic. Uh, on the back here, it's made to look like Castle Grayskull, and you do get this little bio here, but um, that's all pretty basic there. Now this front flap does open, so uh, basically with a magnet. So you can swing this open, and you can see the figure inside. On this side, you've got an image of the figure, again, standing in front of Castle Grayskull, holding up his sword. Um, but again, it's nice how you can open up the box and take a look at the actual figure. So when you first take it out of the box, everything, including all the accessories and everything, are in this plastic uh, type casing. The only thing not in there is, is this piece, uh, which is separately. But everything else, uh, it's two. It's a double layer thing, and and everything is in there clearly, so that you can see what you're getting. Okay, so here's a look at the figure, along with all the accessories that are included with this deluxe figure outside of the packaging. Okay, so first things first, my figure did come out of the packaging all in one piece. I had no issues with the midsection. I know some people did where I guess the glue uh, was not done correctly or such. And, and when people would take the figure out of the packaging, it would essentially come out in two different pieces. But my figure in regards to that is definitely a pretty solid. Now this figure does come with multiple head sculpts, but this is the one that comes uh, attached to the figure outside of the packaging. And I gotta say it looks pretty good. I mean, definitely He-Man here looks pretty pissed off, but nice skin tone. I really like how they've done the skin tone on this entire figure. Uh, the dirty blonde hair looks pretty good as well. So uh, no complaints in regards to that. I will say that uh, the head does um, is a little loose there um, as far as like the back and forth movement. Um, it does seem to fit a little bit loose there on the ball joint, but nothing too major there. But definitely I, I like the sculpting with this one. And then uh, of course this is the classic harness piece uh, that they've got on the figure when you first take it out of the packaging, which I think looks pretty good. There's some scratch marks on the red up here on these red squares, but I think that's supposed to be like that to give it some kind of wear and tear to it. Uh, the red is a metallic uh, red, and then again you've got some silver uh, kind of coming through there. Uh, the harness itself, it's a dark gray on the harness pieces, and then you've got this lighter silver here in the middle. And then also his symbol on his chest, his classic symbol, is done with a, a little bit brighter red than, than what is on those square pieces on the harness. But overall I think that all looks really good. Um, he's got the wristband, this one here is gold. And so that one looks pretty good. And then he's got this different one here, uh, which looks more like for like, you know, for the shield and stuff. Now, one thing I do want to note on the back of the figure, you'll notice that um, there you can slide his power sword in there in his harness, uh, which is kind of reminiscent of the original toy. But I think it would have been kind of nice if they had included like a sword sheath or some, uh, you know, little extra clip. Uh, for uh, putting the sword on his back as it is again you can just kind of slide it in there like on the original toy now moving down to the midsection uh, so first of all the figure uh, the loincloth is done with a soft goods material so you know it's actual feels like fur which is nice uh, he does have some brown uh, shorts underneath there but I like that they've included that. Also same with uh, this uh, around the boots is done with an actual soft goods type material. So it looks like actual fur. 
Uh, he's got the uh, belt here that is uh, matches up with this uh, wristband, uh, same coloring and, and detailing and everything. And then again, good skin tone throughout the figure, and then nice detailing on the boots. I like the the way they've done the ankle joints here. So you don't actually it doesn't even look like he has like an ankle type joint until you start to move. Uh, the foot around so I like that and it actually does have pivot and everything so uh, they did a good job there of hiding the actual ankle joint on this uh, on this figure now as I mentioned before you do get a couple of different head sculpts with this figure so you get the one that's attached uh, to the figure when you take it out of the packaging and then you get this one that is a similar design uh, similar paint applications but a little bit different expression he's gritting his teeth here and then this middle head which honestly doesn't look that great on the figure but it is in keeping with the original uh, toy head sculpt so I understand why they included that but um, being that the figure itself really it has more of a modern feel to it um, I can't say that classic toy head sculpt uh, works terribly well on the figure but here's a look at that second head sculpt with the gritting teeth and this one actually fits a little bit tighter on that ball joint so this one fits a little bit better than the uh, first head and you can see that is uh, the ball joint there for for this figure and then finally here is the classic toy head sculpt with the light yellow hair and again Again, um, to me, I just feel like that's kind of off. I, I, like I said, I understand they threw it in there as kind of a tribute to the original toy, but it definitely, to me, doesn't look terribly good on the figure. Now you get his classic power sword which is done with just a metallic silver and then you've got the dark gray wrappings on the handle which all look pretty good uh, so no complaints there again it would have been nice if we'd gotten an actual sheath that fit on his back for the sword but but the sword itself uh, looks good it's done with a solid plastic so you don't have to worry about it bending or warping or anything like that so um, overall I like that and then you get the second version of the power sword which is done with translucent plastic so I, I guess this is meant to go more with the thunder punch he-man but to me it's more it kind of is reminiscent of like when the lightning is hitting the sword and he's transforming into he-man so that's kind of what this reminds me of but I don't know if the original thunder punch he-man had a translucent sword like this or not but it's kind of cool looking especially if you like translucent type things it's the same sword as the other one uh, you know same sculpting and everything just done with a different type of translucent yellow plastic now to go along with this classic look besides the power sword you also get his classic shield and you get nice detailing uh, looks like it's uh, leather here on the back portion of the shield which is nice you get the strap which is done with a hard plastic and then the handle and then on the front um, you know very reminiscent of the original toy with the red markings and then the silver and you've got some gold highlights on there as well uh, some dings and, and stuff on the shield so it looks like it's uh, seen a little bit of battle but definitely a pretty cool addition and then to go along with that you also get his battle axe and again uh, nicely sculpted with the metallic silver with the gold highlights you've got some darker uh, silver uh, grayish color here on the wrappings um, and it's 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 again a hard plastic and it's a, it's pretty pointy here at the top so I like that so, um, you know, again, uh, one of his classic weapons like the original toy had, you know, besides the power sword, the shield, and the axe as well. The figure comes with two pairs of hands. So you get a pair of closed fists, and then you get a pair of gripping hands. And then he also comes with one pointing hand for, for the right arm. And switching out the hands is easy. However, you want to note that these uh, wrist pieces are separate pieces, so they will come off if you don't have any hands connected on the figure but um, the hands pull off and then just pop right in. The figure comes with a stand, it's pretty basic, uh, comes in two pieces, so you get the base here which is done with a black plastic. You get this kind of cool design on the bottom, but this is the bottom so you're not really going to see that so it seems kind of pointless to me but uh, you just plug the arm in um, and it pops in there and then you got this piece which lifts up and down you also get this knife and sheath it's an ankle sheath um, which not really something you know I recall on being on any of the original He-Man toys 
maybe this was something he had in some of the original artwork or something I don't know but it is uh, a knife which has a pretty you know hard plastic sharp blade I mean not super sharp but it is very pointy and again it is a hard plastic with metallic silver and then you've got the handle with the brown wrappings and the gold trim and you've got the sheath uh, which looks pretty good um, so and the knife stays on there and then again this is meant for his ankle so uh, it's an elastic strap so you basically uh, pick whichever leg that you want to put it on and then you just have to kind of uh, slide that strap uh, don't stretch it too much because it could break I suppose um, seems to be pretty secure but but I would be careful um, and you just slide it up over his uh, foot and it, again, uh, basically uh, is meant to go uh, on his boot. Okay, now before I transform him into one of the other versions, the Battle Armor or the Thunder Punch He-Man, I just want to give you a look at the classic He-Man with all the accessories attached to the figure. His axe, his sword, his shield, the little uh, uh, ankle knife. So overall it looks pretty good. Um, you know, I, I am noticing the joints aren't quite as loose as they were on my uh, Mondo She-Ra figure. But um, they are a little bit loose in some areas. So that could be something that gets worse over time. And I will go over the articulation in a minute. But just something I noticed. Also just one other thing I want to note here on the knee joints. And I don't know how much it's going to show up on camera. But uh, when you start to like bend his knees and stuff... Um, the portion of the skin that was like under uh, the this portion, um, you can see it, it looks like he has like a, ba a bad tan line. So it's a little bit lighter skin tone there. So that is something you, you notice a little bit when you start to pose the figure and bend the joints a bit. It's not anything major, but, but definitely, again, when you really bend those knees, you kind of notice that. So one other thing I want to know here, again, no sword sheath for putting the, on the back of the figure. So you just have to slide it in there. This is really the best way, just kind of straight down, I found, to slide it. Um, if you try and do it at an angle, it tends to separate the pieces. This harness uh, basically just pops off. You just pop these uh, bottom pieces off if you want to take the harness off. But when you start uh, sticking the sword in there, um, it has a tendency to uh, pop those out. So just note that. Again, it would have been definitely nice if they had included a, a, a sheath that actually attached to the harness uh, for the figure. But to take the harness piece off, you just pop those off. It's easier if you take the head off as well, and then it just comes right off. Now, you, of course, can display the figure with no harness at all, so there he is bare-chested. But let's go on and stick on the battle armor harness. So this one is a hard plastic that is done in just two pieces. Uh, so it has it feels like it has some magnets to keep it in place. So uh, what you want to do uh, with this one is you just uh, split it and then you put the back piece on here. Um, and then uh, you put the front piece on and it should uh, just click into place like that. Now you'll notice that right now there is no uh, symbol there. So unlike the original toy that had the little flip thing to mimic the battle damage, with this they just gave you uh, two different versions that you can click on. So the one that's uh, not battle damaged or the one that looks like has been uh, uh, beat up and, and had some sword, uh, sword scratching on it and such. And all you do is, again, it looks like they've used a magnet. So you just uh, have it uh, put it in place like that. So... Um, it will move a little bit, so you know that's something to note. You know, if you want it to be absolutely straight, uh, be careful when you're fooling around with the figure. But again, it just uh, pops on there with a little magnet, and that's the regular clean version. So um, pretty cool overall. And here's a look at the back of of this harness piece uh, for the battle uh, armor He-Man. And uh, again, uh, to give you that kind of metal uh, scratched up feel, you've got some lighter uh, silver scratch marks um, all throughout the back here, which looks pretty good. Um, you also have that again here a little bit on the front as well. Now another thing I want to note here I've noticed on the back of the figure I've got a few little scratch marks on his skin. I think that might be from when I slid the sword in the back of the harness. 
So uh, just note that you know uh, if you slide things back here, uh, you might get a little some dings there on the skin tone. And so. then to transform him into the Thunder Punch version, um, so again you get another harness piece that it looks reminiscent to the Thunder Punch He-Man figure. And with this one, um, it is done. This piece back here is a hard plastic. Uh, but the straps are done with just a rubber material, hard plastic here on the front piece. Um, but basically all you do is, again, you'll probably want to pop the head off, whatever head you have on the figure, and then just put the um, harness over his neck. And then you just plug in these bottom pieces to this back. So you have to line those up, but they should, uh, if you get them lined up, which can be a little tricky, but they should just push in there. And once you get them pushed in, then then the harness piece should stay on there pretty good. Now, for this version of He-Man, not only do you want to switch out the harness piece, but you also want to switch out those wristbands. So you pop the hands off, and you get these red uh, wristbands uh, that go with the harness. And was in keeping with the original figure, so you just pop the hand back on. Once you take those off, again, slide this off, and put this one on. I don't think it really matters which one is left and which one's right for the wrist pieces. They're both basically the same, but again, they match up nicely with the harness piece. And then you also get the shield, which is reminiscent of the toy. And what's cool about this is, you know, the gimmick of the original Thunder Punch He-Man was it had uh, caps that you could put in it, so you can make a Thunder Punch, per se. So you don't get working caps, but you do get this piece that looks like the old uh, caps that, that you would put in the toy. And what you do is you just slide this down into uh, this little circle area of the shield. So, um, you know, kind of cool. You know, it's not the actual, you know, you don't get working caps or anything. Um, and it does, that piece fits in there kind of loosely. So it doesn't like, doesn't seem to securely go in there, but it does turn. Um, but again, I, I do think it's kind of cool that they added that. Just wanted to show you the back side of the shield, which has some nice detailing as well. And of course, you've got the strap, which is done with a hard plastic and the handle, so that you just uh, essentially um, slide it over and then you uh, slide the handle into the grip hand there. And then finally, for this version of He Man, as I said at the beginning, I think this translucent uh, power sword is meant to go with the Thunder Punch He Man. So. Um, I don't remember the Thunder Punch having a translucent sword, but again, I believe this is supposed to go with that. And so, um, definitely a little more goes into transforming him into this version of He-Man than the, the Battle Armor He-Man. But it is kind of a cool, nice little nod to that version of the He-Man figure. Oh, and actually one other addition that you have, an option that you have, is you actually get this Thunder Punch hand. So you've got the translucent yellow plastic, um, and you just unplug the hand that you want to use this with. I guess it could be with the right or the left, but um, essentially, uh, while you don't get working caps, you do get a Thunder Punch uh, hand effect that, to go along with this version. And here's a quick look at the figure with the Thunder Punch effect attached and the shield with the cap piece in it, um, along with the Thunder Punch harness piece. Now this figure stands almost 12 inches tall exactly. Now the only other Mondo He-Man figure I have is the recent She-Ra figure so here's a comparison of those two. He-Man is a bit taller though with uh, She-Ra's tiara. She actually uh, is about the same height but but head to head He-Man is a bit taller. Okay so now for articulation on this one. Uh, the head you can look down about this much and you can turn the head all the way around and you do get pivot. Again, I would say these heads fit a little bit loose on this figure, especially this one that's attached to the figure when you take it out of the packaging. So that's just something to note. But the overall movement on the head is pretty good. Now with the arms, you can get the arm out good there. Uh, you've got good rotation there. You've got a bicep swivel. You've got single hinged elbows, so he can bend his elbow about that much. You've got the rotation with the hands, and you've got the hinges on the hands, so you get up and down movement. You get a midsection joint for rotation, a little bit of rotation, but not too much. I'd also be a little bit wary because you might start uh, flaking the skin tone because uh, those joints do rub. 
uh, with one another so just just note that you also get a waist swivel um, again no issues with my figure as far as coming apart or anything uh, with the splits he can do the splits about that much um, you can actually get the legs over pretty good though um, and then you can get the leg forward uh, about that much so you can get the leg forward and then you can do the leg back about that much you do not get a thigh swivel per se uh, it, it, the leg is attached with a ball joint up there so you get some rotation around that ball joint but you do not get an actual thigh swivel you do get double jointed knees so he's got good bending there at the knee you also get uh, actually you do not get a boot cuff swivel um, but then you do have those hinges on the feet, which as I said, they, they manage to hide pretty well on this figure, which also does give you some ankle pivot and no peg holes on the bottom of the feet. So overall, you know, I'm pretty happy with this one. Definitely uh, like this one. Uh, I'm more satisfied with this uh, figure than I was with my She-Ra figure, which I had some issues, only got one grip hand. The joints were really loose on She-Ra. Uh, I didn't have any issues with my head sculpt, but I know other people did on that one. So with my He-Man here, uh, definitely uh, not really any major issues. I would have liked to have seen a, a sword sheath for the back, especially since the sword does seem to maybe uh, scuff up the the skin tone, the the paint on the skin tone a little bit. Um, the joints are not anywhere near as loose as they were on my She-Ra figure. Uh, the the head the head is a little bit loose, um, and I could see maybe these joints getting loose over time. But for the most part, uh, they are a lot more uh, tight than they were on my She-Ra figure. Now, this figure was released as a Mondo exclusive, the deluxe version that had the Thunder Punch and the, the Battle Armor uh, stuff with it. There was a, a non-Mondo exclusive version released, which you could pre-order at places like Big Bad Toy Store, but I believe they are currently sold out of that figure. Um, I don't know if other places have it in stock or still available for pre-order or what have you. But um, overall, you know, I think this was a pretty good figure. Um, it definitely gives me hope. I was getting pretty worried about Battle Cat. I went on and got the Battle Cat figure to go along with this He-Man figure. And after my She-Ra, I, I was definitely having some doubts. Now, again, I know some people had some issues with their He-Man figure as far as that midsection goes. I believe if you contact the Mondo customer service... They will uh, take steps to rectify that issue with you. So um, hopefully uh, if, if that ends up being a problem with your figure, it is something that you can get fixed. But for me, you know, for my figure, no real major issues. Just wishing that they included the sword sheath for, for the power sword. Uh, that's really my biggest complaint overall with the figure. So that's it. I'd love to hear your own thoughts about this down in the comments section below. If you're new to the channel, please think about subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell notification so you're alerted every time I upload a new video. Also, if you're so inclined, please like this video. As always, guys, stay safe out there. And until next time, I'll catch you later. Hey, thanks for watching today's video and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that bell notification to alert it every time I upload a new video. And be sure to head over to the Toy News International and Marvelous News Message Sports Communities. It's a great place to talk toys and win cool contests like $100 store credits to Big Bad Toy Store. And remember, action figures are great. <laughs>